Welcome back, Seth Bling here. Today I've got for you a command block system that can determine if a player is standing still or moving around. Uh, here's how it works. You'll notice that this line here kind of blinks off whenever I move around a bit. Uh, it doesn't look very consistent, but it, that's what it's doing. Now if I stand still for a moment, uh, this line of repeaters is going to deplete until it hits over here, and then it's going to say Seth Bling is idle. Now if I start moving again, the line of repeaters gets reset back to full, and this is sort of like a progress bar in terms of determining whether the player is idle. So if I sit still again, it's going to start depleting again, and it'll say I'm idle. So you could use this for a challenge map where you don't want the player to be able to stand still, or I don't know, but uh, I just wanted to go over how, how it works because uh, it's kind of interesting. So it uses a what I consider to be a bug, and I, I think most people would probably consider it to be a bug. Uh, if you look at these command blocks, uh, there is a pulse coming in on these command blocks that is basically making them constantly run. These are test for commands. And you'll notice as I move around, which ones are on and which ones are off kind of change. And that's what's determining if the player is moving. Now let's look at the actual commands. So this one is test for at P 0, 0, 200 million, 200 million. So that's... Uh, testing for a player near 0, 0, 200 million, that's the x, y, z coordinates, within a radius of 200 million. Now, the reason that it's so inconsistent and that these blink on and off is that uh, basically when the game computes large numbers like this, uh, looks for players within a radius with large numbers, I think what's going on is that it's squaring these numbers, because you need to square numbers in order to determine distance, and when you square a number and you get a, an integer larger than 4 billion, it kind of overflows and it becomes basically garbage. So uh, basically, I think that that sort of the player's distance to that central point, 0, 0, 200 million, is getting squared and it's becoming kind of random numbers. So then when you compare that to 200 million, um, it's pretty much random whether or not it will output true or false. And so you get these kind of stripes of X and Y and Z coordinates. Uh, there's two command blocks devoted to each coordinate. So this one is a Z coordinate. This one's a Y coordinate. You can see the 200 millions in the Y spot there. Uh, this one's also a Y. This one's X. Uh, another Z and another X. So I used a few, a couple of them in each coordinate just to make sure that the bands where the player would be detected or not detected with the test for command were narrow enough that it would work pretty well. Uh, if you added more of these, it would be even more sensitive to player movement. But yeah, basically when it gets a signal on or off, it then triggers. If the signal turns on, it'll trigger this command block. If the signal turns off, it'll trigger this one. And all of these do the same thing. They set the player's moved score to 1. When the player's move score gets set to 1, uh, this test for a block detects them, and it kind of outputs a pulse, which sets their moved score to 0. So whenever they move, it just turns it, turns it right back off. But it also outputs a little pulse here, and this pulse is what uh, controls the countdown timer for determining whether the player is idle. So, kind of technical, but very useful for map makers. Just kind of a useful technique, and uh, hopefully this, this sort of bug, or whatever you want to call it, <laughs> can be useful for some other things too. That's about it. Thanks for watching.